Fisher Awards staff members, Western New York receives aid in the fight against heroin, and a popular Fox News figurehead is now unemployed. All this and more next on Fisher News. Welcome to Fisher News. I'm Caitlin Murphy. During the 2017 staff celebration and awards ceremony, the campus community came together to recognize the positive impact staff make at St. John Fisher College. Held on Tuesday, April 11th, the event also featured an awards program where staff members were honored for their significant contributions to the college. This year, the Staff Recognition Committee received nearly 40 nominations for the six awards. This year, the Staff Recognition Committee elected to add a new award to the program. The Creativity and Innovation Award is given to those who have shown creativity in their work or launched a new initiative that has had a positive impact on the Fisher community. Cecil Felton, Media Center Coordinator in the Department of Media and Communication, was the inaugural recipient of this award. Other award winners include Bruce Jesse, who won the Lifelong Learner Award, Sarah Shipley, who won the Student's Choice Award, Renee Morano, who won the Cardinal Award, Michael Valenti, who won the Good Samaritan Award, and Jeremy Luke, winner of the Freshman Award. During a ceremony on Tuesday, April 11th, members of the St. John Fisher College community helped dedicate a laboratory in the Integrated Science and Health buildings in honor of contributions of the Loss family. The Loss Family Research Laboratory is being named in recognition of the generosity of Janice Loss 92 and the late Dr. Robert Loss 74. Dr. Loss, who graduated magna cum laude from the college before attending medical school at the University of Rochester, was a member of the Board of Trustees for nearly 20 years, serving on a variety of committees, including academic affairs, development, finance, and the executive committee. Mrs. Loss, who is the president and owner of Skin Search of Rochester Incorporated and Derma Spa, partners of Dermatology Associates of Rochester, joined the board in June 2016. In 2003, the Losses founded the Robert and Janice Loss Lecture Series, which promotes the study of sciences among high school and college students. During the 63rd commencement ceremony of St. John Fisher College, President Rooney will give President's Medals to two deserving members of the Western New York community. The ceremony will take place on Saturday, May 13th at the Blue Cross Arena in Rochester. Mary Wilson, wife of the late Ralph C. Wilson Jr., will be given the President's Medal for service to St. John Fisher College, which honors her decades-long philanthropic efforts at the college. Reverend Thomas Dugan, CSB, a member of the Congregation of St. Basil, will receive the President's Medal for service to the Bazillion Missions in recognition of the 50 years he dedicated to parishes in Mexico. Each year, the President's Medals give the college the opportunity to honor those who have made a profound impact, not just on Fisher, but on the world around them, said Rooney. Both Mrs. Wilson and Father Dugan set a wonderful example to our graduates about how to live a life dedicated to service and community, and it is my sincere privilege to present them with these medals. Hello all, and welcome to the season finale of Fisher Sports Desk. I'm your host, Ricky Barton, and without further ado, let's get into it. The nationally ranked St. John Fisher College baseball team continued to roll as the number 18 Cardinals won their 11th straight game after scoring four runs in the seventh inning to defeat the College of Brockport 4-2. With the win, Fisher moves to 19-6 on the year, while the Golden Eagles fall to 16-13 on the season. Late game dramatics as the Cardinals were down 2-0. In the seventh inning, it was Evan Ryan stepping to the plate and jacking a three-run homer as the Cardinals turned a two-run deficit into a two-run advantage before the Golden Eagles could notch that third out of the, that inning. With the two-run edge, Fisher bullpen took care of the rest, as it was Dylan Wilkinson, Kevin Burge, and Kyle Chambers, who combined to throw four scoreless innings. Wilkinson was credited with his first collegiate win and moved to 1-0 after giving up just two hits in two innings of work. In other sporting news, the St. John Fisher College men's tennis team defeated the Highlanders of Houghton College 8-1 at home on Wednesday in an Empire 8 matchup. Kevin Kulawick won 6-1, 7-5 in his first singles, while in the second flight, Quinn Magiria won 6-3 and 6-3. At the third singles, it was John Miller who defeated his opponent 6-3, 0-6, 10-3. In the fifth spot, Jarrett Pelton won 3-6, 6-2, 10-7, 10-7. While in the sixth spot, it was Dustin McCullough who defeated his opponent 
10-8. The men's tennis team will return to action at 1 p.m. on Saturday when they take on Empire 8 rival Nazareth College. In more news, Lindsay Thayer of the nationally ranked St. John Fisher College softball team has been named the Louisville Slugger National Fast Pitch Coaches Association Division III Pitcher of the Week as announced on Wednesday. The junior would combine to throw 13 innings where she allowed just four total hits in one unearned run while tallying 20 strikeouts in the circle. Thayer, who has been named an All-American in each of her previous two seasons, currently leads the umpire A and ranks second in the nation with 197 strikeouts. She leads all Division III pitchers with over 13 strikeouts per seven innings, while her 14 wins is tied for 12th most in the country. Congratulations to Lindsay. Number 10 softball will return to action this Friday at 3 p.m. when it makes the short trip down to East Ave to take on Empire 8 rival Nazareth College in a pivotal doubleheader. Thank you for tuning in. This is your host, Ricky Barton, signing out. We'll be right back with City and State News. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. That just really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Welcome back to Fisher News. A special state of emergency has been declared in Wayne County for all bays and harbors, according to Wayne County Board of Supervisors Chairman Stephen Leroy and Sheriff Barry Verts. An announcement released Wednesday, April 19th applies to Sodus Bay, Port Bay, East Bay, Blind Sodus Bay, Pulteneyville Harbor, and Bear Creek Harbor in Wayne County. As of Thursday morning, all motorized boat traffic will be required to operate at idle speed only, causing no wake on the county's bays and harbors. The state of emergency is linked to bays and harbors having higher than normal water levels. Lake Ontario and Wagon County bays and harbors are reported to be at or above flooding level, which is 247.3 feet. Any additional boating traffic has the potential to create a hazardous situation, property damage, and shoreline erosion. It will soon be easier to track sex offenders around Monroe and Livingston counties. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office and other members of local law enforcement agencies announced Wednesday they will be rolling out a new sex offender management and community notification tool. The database, called Offender Watch, allows users to search a specific location or sign up for alerts when a sex offender moves into their neighborhood. You can not only search addresses and locations, but also phone numbers, email addresses, and usernames that they may use online. The Finger Lakes region is getting $12 million from New York State to fight the heroin and opioid epidemic. The funding was announced after Governor Andrew Cuomo signed that legislation that gives $213 million to New York State to combat heroin. The funding will help support prevention, treatment, and recovery programs. The programs will target chemical dependency, public awareness, and educational activities. According to the state, the number of opioid-related deaths doubled in 2015 when compared to 2010. The number of heroin deaths in 2015 was five times the amount of 2010. And we'll be right back with national news. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking, and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. That just really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college. 
college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Welcome back to Fisher News. A Florida state senator is apologizing for using racial slurs in a conversation with two black colleagues. News reports say Senator Frank R. Tiles used a variation of the N-word and obscene language in a private conversation Monday night. The Republican lawmaker apologized on the Senate floor Wednesday. I extend a heartfelt apology to my colleagues and to all of those I have offended. While my words have caused pain in many, I would like to specifically apologize to two members. To Senator Audrey Gibson, I apologize. I am so sorry for the words and the tone I used with you, regretfully, Monday night. There is no excuse, nor will I offer one. My comments to you were the most regretful of all because they injured you personally. No one deserves to be spoken that way, much less a person of your stature, dignity, and integrity. I humbly ask to accept my heartfelt apology. Senator Perry Thurston said the incident happened as they spoke about a bill at a private club in Tallahassee. State Democratic leaders have called on our tiles to step down. And Bill O'Reilly is out. Fox News parent company 21st Century Fox made the announcement on Wednesday. O'Reilly was also notified on Wednesday. The New York Times reported earlier this month that five women had been paid a total of $13 million to keep quiet about unpleasant encounters with O'Reilly. Dozens of his show's advertisers pulled out following the report, though O'Reilly's viewership did increase. O'Reilly has denied wrongdoing. His ouster brings an end of his two-decade reign as one of the most popular commentators. Tucker Carlson will be moving from 9 p.m. to take over O'Reilly's 8 p.m. slot, while The Five will move to 9 p.m. with new co-host Jesse Waters. Eric Bowling, who had been the co-host of The Five, is taking the 5 p.m. hour by himself, though his new show will not debut until May 1st. Wednesday marks the 22nd anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing. A remembrance ceremony was held Wednesday morning to remember the 168 lives lost when a bomb exploded outside the Murrah Federal Building. Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon was among those who spoke. 902 and, and the event that happened here was unimaginable. It was shocking. We couldn't believe that something like this could happen to our people in our state and in our nation. And yes, we did lose 168 lives and 19 children that fateful day. But we are here today to remember. Remember the hope, the healing, the inspiration, the generosity, the love, the compassion of our people and to tell the families that we have not forgotten and we will never forget the suffering, the grief, not only of the families, but those who lost so many and those who were injured. Timothy McVeigh was convicted of the 1995 bombing and was later executed. Terry Nichols was convicted of conspiracy in connection with the bombing and is currently serving life in prison. And that's all of today's news. Be sure to check us out on Time Warner Cable Channel 12 and like us on Facebook and Twitter at Cardinal Television Fisher. For Fisher News, I'm Caitlin Murphy.